Hey there, everybody, and welcome back. For those of you looking to get ChatGPT hooked up to your application, whether it's an AppGyver app or just whatever your application is via an API, stay tuned. I'm covering the basics of how to do just that in today's video. Now, before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. All right, so ChatGPT has been a really big, popular topic on the internet. For those of you that aren't familiar, you can look it up on Google and learn more about it, but I originally didn't want to make the video just because I thought that there are a lot of jobs that this is unfortunately going to be taking away, but at the same time, it's just so prevalent at this point and it has been requested, so I figured I'd go ahead and make the video. So as a sample of the application, you can type in something like, I'm going to misspell a word on purpose, and then we're going to click the chat button, and then you'll see it is going to spell it correctly. If I type in, hey, how are you? and click chat you'll see the response here and basically it's just chatting with chat gpt so the idea is we're using api calls in the background now we will be using appgyver which is a free codeless application development platform using their community edition we're going to be using that for the video but you can use similar logic to actually get this set up really anywhere now, one thing to make sure that you're doing first and foremost, this video is for educational purposes only. So make sure that if you are using ChatGPT or any of the other platforms, that you're following any and all local applicable rules, laws, guidelines, etc. And also make sure that you're following the proper use policies for ChatGPT, including how to hide your API key. I'm going to be deleting my API key at the end of this video to just basically be in accordance with their rules, but did want to give you that quick heads up. All right, so we have our AppGyver app built, and I'm going to walk you through what I've set up so far. Now, one thing you're going to need, and this link will be in the description, but we are going to be using this OpenAI documentation. So I'll put the link in the description. This page is going to be incredibly helpful for getting everything set up. So what we're going to do <clears throat> is you are going to build out your application however you want. You can change your background colors. If you have any questions on AppGyver stuff in general, check out my channel. I have tons of other videos. But basically, so far, we just have a title that's been dragged over, text that's been dragged over, and then we have this text here. So you'll see this text field here has just been dragged over, and then the content is a formula, and you'll see it just says, in double quotes, response, semicolon, space, and then we have outside of double quotes, space plus space, and then we have appvars.chatgpt reply. Now you can type that out without the variable, just don't forget to add it afterwards. So you'll see when I click on variables here, I have chatgpt reply and chatgpt send. You're probably going to want to go ahead and add those two variables. You can ignore the rest of them. That's for some other work that I'm doing. So once you have that set up, you're going to drag over an input field, and then I've just called it chat, and then the value is bound to an app variable, so you can click here and choose your app variable. So data variables, app variable, and then chat GPT send. Now you can name your variables whatever you want, but once you've done this, you're basically saying whatever the user types here is our variable. Next up, we have our logic. Now, we are going to need to set this up before we start building this. But just to give you a quick idea, you have two choices for this flow. First is an HTTP request, which is a little bit more difficult to clean up due to the structure of what we're getting back. The other option, which we'll be covering in this video, is using the create record function and then the set app variable functions. So to get this set up, first things first, we're going to go to our data tab. And we're going to start out in our home page of the data resource screen. So you need to click Add Data Resource, REST API Direct Integration. And once you select that, you'll see we're going to name the resource and choose the description. And then we will need the resource URL. Now, the ironic thing about this is if you have any questions, obviously drop them in the comment box below. But you can also just ask ChatGPT yourself. So that's kind of the ironic part about having a platform like this is you do have the ability to 
basically just paste in the URL. Um, so we'll instead just take off and just go to OpenAI. And then you can go to products and then you can choose GPT-4. At the time of filming this video, there's a wait list. But if you need to, you can just click Try Chat GPT, and then it'll log you in. And then when you click Log In, you can start your chat and ask it some questions. I actually did that while making this video. Some of the content wasn't super helpful, but some of it was. So <clears throat> this is the URL for the specific endpoint I'm using. Now you need to make sure you're using the right URL for you because they do have different engines and different products, but this is kind of just the generic chat URL endpoint. So you need to find your correct endpoint. You can use this one at least at the time of filming this video. And then the next thing is we're going to go to the post section. Now one thing to note, I am deleting my API key because they say that they don't want you to share this API key for a couple of reasons. First, I think that there's a free tier for ChatGPT, but if there is, if you go above that tier and you start paying, if people get access to this API key, they can start making requests or posts on your account and drive up your bill. So the idea here when we go to this page is you need to log into your OpenAI account. So when you go here, you'll click login, and then you'll need to access your account page and there's an option for your API key. So all you need to do is get that API key from OpenAI and then you'll add that in here. All right, so I figured I'd pull it up really quickly just to make this more complete video. So here's the link here because it is a little bit more difficult to find it if you're just at the chat GPT page. But if you go to the API documentation, which there is a link in the video description, if you're scrolling through, there's actually a link right here near the top of the page to visit your API page or your API key page. It'll bring you to a page like this and basically you can click create a new secret key. When you do this, it'll give you this API key here. Now the cool part about this is you can click right here and revoke it. So this is what I'm gonna be doing with this key here at the end of this video. I'll generate a new one and then delete the original. That way that API key is not just floating out there to whoever sees this video. But that's how you create your key. So this right here is your API key and you can click the button here to copy it to the clipboard. So let's go ahead and get this added into our AppGyver application. So at this point we have our base set and then we're gonna to go to create record post. You'll click method enabled to ensure that all this is here. You can ignore this top field. Right here, you'll see we have key. So we're gonna type in authorization, authorization, and then the value type is text. And then you're going to paste in, it's not just your key, it's the text as well. So your key, for example, when you create it, it does not have the text bearer, which is going to be needed. So you'll copy that to clipboard. And then what we're going to do is we are going to, in the value field, type in the text bearer, which is capital B, E-A-R, E-R, and then a space. And then you'll just paste in your API key here. So again, it's literally just, we're telling the system the authorization, and then we're telling the system it's bearer, space, Here's our API key. So you'll add that in in the HTTP header field. To do that, to add a new header, you can just click the plus sign. Again, when you click it, you'll get something like this and you'll just fill it out accordingly. Authorization, authorization, bearer space, and then your API key. So I'll remove this extra parameter now. And now we're gonna go and test it. So this is the exciting part. We actually get to see if we're getting a response back. Now, one important thing that you will need is the data to actually send. So as we are looking to try out different chat GPT engines and things of that nature, you need to know what data you're sending. So you'll see here, we've already decided, okay, here's our authorization bearer API key. Now we need to send the data. So if you look right next to this section here, we don't need the quote, we just need the content in between and including the curly brackets. So we can highlight this and hit control C. You'll see this queries the GPT 3.5 turbo model. And then 
it tells it what to do. So now we're going to go and we're going to set a schema really quickly just so AppGyver knows what to do with the data. So in the record properties field, we'll click this little double bracket and we'll type in or we'll click formula. I already have some data from testing this previously, but I'm going to start from scratch with you. So now we're just going to paste in exactly what we just had. So what we just copied over, it'll have this um, kind of red text potentially for you. Don't worry about it. As long as the save button is something that we can activate, we'll be able to save this content. So we're going to click save very quickly and we're going to click run test. And then you'll see we get a response back with a bunch of information. So now we're going to click set schema from response, which will bring us to this page. You're not going to have this content up top, but you will have this content down here. This may vary depending on the type of chat GPT engine and data that you're using and sending respectively. But the general idea is we've basically told AppGyver, okay, when we get this giant chunk of information, break it down and make it a little bit easier to use. And then we can kind of map it in our app. So next up, we're going to click save. And then we're going to go back and we're going to add in our schema properties for the top part. So when you go to the schema page under the post tab, you'll see we have custom schema selected. Yours may be use get schema by default or custom. Either way, you need to select custom schema as the option. And then you can click here to add a property. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in three properties specifically. So I will show you exactly why we're doing this. What we're doing is we're setting it up to say model messages temperature. So we have, I've clicked add property three times. For model, it's just going to be text. Messages, text. So you're just going to click up here, highlight and type in the name. So when you click add property, click up here and type in messages. The value type is text. Repeat, do the same thing. This one is model, text. And then the final one is temperature. And then the initial value is 0 0.7. And that is going to be a value type number. Now you can learn more about what each of these values are in this page here. So basically what they are, what they do, what you need to be sending, how to structure it, but I'm just using default values for this. Now, once you've done that, you can click save again, and then we'll close this. And now we can go ahead and get started with the testing process. So I've added in a button. You can drag your button over and then when you select your button, you can click here to show the logic. First thing we're going to do is scroll over on the left hand side and we are going to drag over the create record function just like this. And then you're going to drag over the set app variable. Again, you'll scroll through all the options over here. So basically you look for set app variable or page variable, whichever you used. So you'll drag that over and you'll connect them just like I have here. So we drag from here to here and it will draw out this line. And then from the top node, because when we click on this, we're looking at outputs and port one is the response and that's what we want. So we'll connect the response port to the set app variable option. So next up, we're going to go to create record and we're going to go to properties and we'll choose resource name and we're going to choose chat one and or whatever the chat is for your chat GPT setup. Now you will have record properties because we've set the schema previously. So I'm going to show you what these look like. When we click custom object, I have data here. You probably won't, but I will show you how easy it is to get this set up. So when we've selected, so I'll just go back in, you should have model messages temperature. 
Now I noticed when I was playing around with this a lot, at one point messages wasn't a field I could type in, and I think it was a caching issue. So if you're messing around with this and testing it a lot, and you notice your fields are acting a little odd, try clearing out your cache and data for Chrome, logging out, logging back in, that may help. But the idea here is for model, we're going to type out GPT-3.5-turbo or whatever you're using for your model. So we're just typing out what is in double quotes here, not the double quotes. Then for messages, we're typing in the full content of what's in the messages section. The reason I have it set up like this is I was playing around with trying to get objects and lists in the schema and it just wasn't working. And it's much easier just to include this entire portion as a formula. So if you go to the API documentation page, go to making requests and you find this request here, it's near the top. You're looking for messages and we're just sending whatever is to the right of messages. So basically what's in the brackets and the brackets, and we're talking the square bracket and the curly bracket. So you'll see here, I already have it pasted in. So we have the bracket, roll, all of this. And the idea here is, regardless of the chat GPT model you're using, we're doing this exact same process. So we've already established the authorization and the headers because we don't need this one, although you normally probably would. But um, if you're using a different platform, you may need that. But basically the idea here is we're mapping out our data. So regardless of the chat GPT model, you should just need to choose and map out the data exactly as we're doing here. So in the case where it's what I would call a simple value and it's just a one-to-one -one relationship, you just make it a one-to-one -one relationship, just like we've done. So it's relatively straightforward. Again, each of these values from the schema we created should be the value that's on the left-hand side in double quotes. The values on the bottom here are the values that are on the right-hand side. So in this case, again, GPT 3.5 Turbo, and then we've copied in everything in the brackets. So in messages, you'll click here and you are going to assign it a formula, paste in everything in brackets. One change we're gonna make is where content in the API documentation says, say this is a test. We're gonna remove everything in the double quotes and the double quotes. And then we're gonna add in appvars.chatgpt send. So let's go through this, maybe a little easier to do this together. So we're gonna copy this or whatever equivalent messages you're sending. And then this is what yours will look like by default. Now, we're gonna go in next to say this is a test because this is the command to chat GPT. And we're gonna type in app variables or app vars for short. And you should see down here, all of your app variables or page vars for page variables. And we're just gonna double click the one that is our input field. So basically the value we're sending. And then temperature here, if you set your variable in the schema page, by default, it should show up as 0 0.7, but otherwise you can set it here. And we're gonna click save. Now we're gonna go to set app variable and we're gonna set the chat GPT reply variable we've already created. And the assigned value is going to be a formula. This will look very complicated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it and show you the easiest way to find it. You can type in out and immediately we're going to get outputs because this is connected to the create record function. So basically you look through and you can click through and see the different values. And we need the one that says choices, zero message content. You'll see right here, it says this is a test. This is because we previously ran this function and clicked set schema from response. So now we have sample data to work with. So we're gonna double click this and click save. And we're gonna save our application. And now we're gonna test it. So we're gonna go back here and type in, how is your day? Chat. And then you'll wait a second or two. Bear in mind, 
you may need to wait longer depending on a couple of factors. For example, if you're not on a paid model, then you may not have the fastest response times. So give it time before you start spamming the chat button and hitting it repeatedly. But you'll see, we got our response. So now let's type in, what is YouTube? And see what it comes up with. And we'll see the response again. Response times vary, but I've noticed it usually doesn't take too long. So we're getting some information here. And again, you can type in whatever you need. So for example, how to code hello world in Python, which is a programming language. And then you'll wait for it to come back. And you'll see we have quite a large one. So response, you'll see we have all of these steps. Uh, this is a pretty common thing that a lot of people use chat GPT for. So you'll see we have the steps, a uh, pretty cool way to get this set up a really cool option, but everything's working as expected. Now, one thing I do want to note on the troubleshooting front for people that may be having any issues or questions, or if you don't want to use chat GPT 3.5 turbo or whatever the case is, when you're in your data tab, what you need to remember is when we go to create record post. When we go over to our schema, messages, model, and temperature are the data that we're sending. So you would just have whatever your body of your post message is, map it out here, and then set your schema from response in the test page here to make sure you have sample data to work with. It makes it easier to map after the fact. Once you've done that, your custom object list here, you need to type it out and make sure everything's correct. For the one-to-one -one relationships, you can do this. For the arrays, etc., you can try to work it out just like this. Don't be nervous if it's all in red like mine is. As you can see, it's working as expected. And then for troubleshooting, if you have any issues, you can right-click and click Inspect. And for example, I'll introduce an issue really quickly. So we're going to go to our variables slider or we will actually go to the data tab. And in the config option, I'm going to use, I'm gonna delete a letter from the API key, and we'll walk through how to troubleshoot. So we're gonna type in hey here, and again, right click on the page and click inspect, and we have our network tab. And so basically what we're doing is we're gonna click chat, and then you'll see we have a red API call here. So when I click this call, you can see in the response tab, there's a message saying incorrect API key provided. So in this case, you know I need to fix the API key. You can double click here to open this with, which may have a little bit more information, but that just tells you how to fix it. And again, some may be a little bit more difficult to diagnose and troubleshoot, but that's the general idea. So I could go here and notice, oh, hey, I deleted this number by accident and click save. And now when I go back here, I can type in, please subscribe and click chat. And then you'll see after a little bit of time passes, we get our final response here. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below. Don't forget to check out codelessfix.com for more tutorials. And I have a couple of free classes and forums that are listed there as well. I'll see you all in the next video.